Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of new here. I have to ask, who, who is that? Charles McGill. The M in HHM. Greatest legal mind I ever knew. Well, maybe there are more important things. A large amount of Better Call Saul's identity has been tied to a slow unraveling. Of Jimmy as a person, of Kim in multiple ways, of Gus, of Chuck, of the show itself from a significantly lighter story tonally into something much more brutal and crushing. A lot of the experience of watching the series is done with hands over the face through opened fingers, waiting with bated breath for the ticking time bomb that is this story to blow. We know what the situation is like in Breaking Bad. We know which characters are present there and which are not. And waiting to find out the fates of those who are not has been one of the biggest hooks and thrills as Better Call Saul has chugged along towards its conclusion, as we anxiously await for all of the pieces to clunk into place. How exactly will this situate Jimmy, Gus, and Mike into the positions and mentalities that they have in Breaking Bad? How will these absences be explained? There was always this element of this prequel being a powder keg, and it was always a matter of when, not if, it would go off. Well, as pretty much all of us expected, Season 6 was the only place where all of this was really going to happen, and the first half of it has been absolutely explosive to say the least. We've had a ton of rising tension and intrigue and threat involving Lalo, Mike, and Gus, the continual downward trajectory of Jimmy and Kim as they relentlessly head towards implosion, and we've had two devastating deaths for two fantastic characters, with more potentially to follow. And today I'm going to be talking about what I can consider to be the more gutting of the two. The brutal, unceremonious cutting off of a man who really can't be accused of doing too much wrong and just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, getting caught up in the game right at the end. There's really no need to- ah! 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 Shit! Ah! Shit! Oh my god! He's no! Following the character of Howard Hamlin has been a joy in terms of writing and a tragedy in terms of content. He starts off seeming to be the classic pompous, insufferable corporation head in the first season hell-bent on domineering over Jimmy, but as we progress through and details are brought to light, it's made clear that that was just a shallow assumption primarily given life due to the fact that he had been bending over backwards consistently trying to cover for the bitterness and resentment of Chuck. He is recontextualized here and shown in a new light, and from this point on, despite continuing to stay at Chuck's side and despite being flawed in doing so, Howard is shown to be, as his actor Patrick Fabian puts it, decent. He genuinely respects Jimmy and admires his perseverance and spark. He sees Kim as a brilliant mind with fantastic potential, and while he plays the role of a quasi-antagonist early on, it's done out of devotion to Chuck, his legacy, and what he stands for. Despite having his hand forced in not being able to hire Jimmy, he helps him get a job. He helps Kim through college, and pays off her debt. He himself goes into immense debt due to paying out of his own pocket when Chuck goes rogue and blackmails the firm, and in the fallout of Chuck's tragic death, no one takes it harder and no one thinks more about what they could have done differently to prevent this than Howard, racked by guilt and deeply apologetic. He grieves the hardest and falls into a deep depression that Jimmy hammers him into to make himself feel better despite being quite a bit more complicit. Not that it's a competition, of course. But as Howard says, he bounces back from the debt, he tackles his mental health head-on and rises above it all, even demonstrating immense admiration for Jimmy by trying to make things right through attempting to hire him for a prominent role at HHM, to which Jimmy responds to with screwing with him in petty ways, the culmination of which we see in plan and execution. Howard is a dynamic character with tons of utility, but Season 6 firmly roots him in that sympathetic role that gathers in steam as the story goes on and as Jimmy and Kim become more and more unsympathetic. 
He hires a PI and dukes it out with Jimmy, but neither is unreasonable given the circumstances, and in the process we're reminded of the ways in which he's been harassed by Jimmy for reasons that are disproportionate at best. We see him continuing to be as sweet as he can to those around him, lowering himself and offering some advice and wisdom to young up-and-comers, and in a brilliant scene that once again subverts expectations, we see him enthusiastically working on this luxurious morning drink that we assume is for him, only to see that his actual drink is extremely simple and all the care has gone into making this for his wife who shows no appreciation for this nor his constant attempts to reach out to her, in a display of a marriage that is on borrowed time, as much as he tries to save it. This is the final human touch that we have for Howard, the last piece of the puzzle to make him grounded and relatable and sad, as we see that at the end of the day he has immense personal problems just like anyone else. And then to compound this, we have Jimmy and Kim's cruel plot to disgrace him and fast-track the Sandpiper settlement, leading to his drunken but very real and sincere rant, and his death at the hands of the absolutely terrifying Lalo Salamanca. Patrick Fabian has recounted one of the most pivotal bits of advice that he's gotten whilst on the show as something said to him by Vince Gilligan during the shooting of Season 1. Hey, we don't know if Howard's good or bad. We don't know yet. But we hired you, and we hired you because you had a decency about you. Decent, the word I used earlier as how Fabian described his character, is about as apt a description as one can have about Howard, and that describes his role and what he represents. He'll be pushed and pushed and pushed, but he will never concede and become crooked or underhanded. He will settle things openly, in a boxing ring or in dialogue, fair and square because that's who he is, and that's what he knows. He will be flawed at times, but he would never tap into anything even remotely close to the darkness that we see in those in the criminal world, because that just isn't him. And that's the crux here, that's part of why he ultimately becomes easy to like and easy to sympathize with, and that's part of why Jimmy and Kim continuously pick on him. To us, to them, he represents comfort. He is so diametrically opposing to everything that is scary about this world and humanity, and he is just not built to be threatening because he doesn't have a malicious bone in his body. As Better Call Saul progresses, Jimmy begins to dive into two worlds, the world of law, which he had had a long-standing fascination with, and the criminal underworld, the game as it's referred to. He continuously played with fire, but for his and Kim's sake, he tried his best to ensure that both worlds remained separate. That for their safety, he could work with unsavory people and yet somehow keep his head above water and be able to operate in that world of law and return to it as a safety net. As that place where everything, no matter what, will be okay. As long as this world of his was there and intact, the world that his brother loved, the world that he adored in the first place, Jimmy and Kim, hoping against hope, thought that things would sort themselves out. And who is a better representation of that world than this man who lives and breathes it? Howard represents the idea that things will be okay, that there is good and safety and innocence in the world, that they can push and prod him and their luck and they can dip their toes into dark things and get a thrill out of the risk, but that at the end of the day, they can always return back home where it is safe. But in this world, things just don't work out that way, and so things were always going to happen like this for Howard. Getting tangled up with Jimmy and Kim was the worst thing that could have happened to him, and not for the reasons he initially assumed. Our protagonists were cruel and horrible here, and you can see why Howard describes them as soulless, but they never intended to harm him in any way other than reputation. They grew complacent, they never thought about the possibility of these worlds colliding, and fooled themselves into believing they could keep this up despite the signs. And it worked for so long. Regardless of this inevitability, there is something almost surreal about how it all finally came to fruition, with Lalo casually strolling into frame and encroaching upon all of this. But from the moment he did, we all knew that when those worlds did collide, only one of them was ever going to win out. The lesson is, if you're going to be a criminal, do your homework. Wait, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. I... No, I didn't say you're a bad guy, I said you're a criminal. What's the difference? 
I've known good criminals and bad cops, bad priests, honorable thieves. You can be on one side of the law or the other. This universe has consistently touted the idea that the lines between worlds are quite clear, but that the people within them can be as variable as anything. A good criminal, a bad cop. There are numerous examples of characters throughout the series on either side of the divide who subvert what their label may say about them in different ways. But once the veil was lifted at the end of season one, Howard was exactly what he was. Howard was raw, honest, and genuine. Privileged without a doubt, pompous at times, and perhaps unlikable in some of his mannerisms to others. But overall and through and through, he did his best to be good and often succeeded, he was a model of perseverance in the face of all sorts of adversity, and he managed, through immense difficulty, to keep himself, once again, decent. And that is why Jimmy and Kim terrorized him and lulled themselves into complacency, leaning on his presence. That's why he needed to disappear if this show was ever going to become as ruthless as it promised it would be. He is not only gone, but due to what he was put through, his memory and legacy will be completely misrepresented and disgraced. He will not be remembered as the good man that he was, but instead as someone who completely and utterly fell apart, paranoid, delusional, and obsessed with drugs. One of the things that primarily characterized Howard was his perseverance, and I have no doubt that he would have combated this setback with determination and success as well, but for reasons out of his control, this was the one thing that he wasn't able to bounce back from. Howard represented that bubble of safety. He represented the idea that they could play with fire and screw around, but their comfortable life would not be affected by the darkness they dwelt in. But Howard dies to that very same representation of the other world, showing that their world is shattered, that both worlds have collided, and that there is no safety. Howard is symbolic of the earlier elements of Better Call Saul. The lighter tone, the hijinks, Jimmy's innocence. But with him dead, so is any possibility of returning to that safe world that didn't punish them. Now all that's there for Jimmy is this darkness, this engagement with the underworld. I've seen people compare this death to that of Hank from Breaking Bad, but to me, the rarer Drew Sharp comparisons are much more apt. This wasn't a long-standing manhunt conducted out of a prideful need. There was no conviction or dignity in the way Howard went out, like Hank showed in his final moments, or even in the way that Nacho died on his own terms earlier on in the season. This was just a scared, innocent victim, bullied beforehand I might add, who is simply in the wrong place at the wrong time, caught up in a world he knows nothing about. And as much as they loved screwing with him, this is something that will haunt Jimmy and Kim in one way or another for a long, long time, because this is entirely their fault. Howard was the last vestige of Better Call Saul's innocence, but now that safety blanket is gone, and absolutely anything goes from here on out. Many thanks for watching. But yes, I will land on my feet. I will be okay. But you? Far from it.